I said it ended. It's ended. It. I just started it again. Just said it ended. Hi. Thanks. You, thank you guys for joining us. We'll start with Pepper Persley, the next. Hi Diamond, um, great to see you. So I'm, I'm working on a back to school project with a lot of kids in school already or going back soon. Any back to school memories you could share? Honestly, just like the excitement for the first day, you know, it's like, it's always just so fun. You get your new school supplies and, you know, lay out your outfit for what you're gonna wear. And it's always just super exciting the night before the first day of school. Absolutely agree with you on that one, Diamond. Thank you. No problem. All right, Eric Wilson. Diamond, as always, appreciate your time. Just wanted to ask you um, how the team is doing with regard to this upcoming game tonight against the Storm, how the team's looking um, offensively. Uh, yeah, I mean, offensively, we've, we've been pretty solid. I think that we've put an emphasis on it the past, you know, like week or so. And um, I think we've been playing very good as far as offensive scoring and just playing in flow. And, you know, as far as the game tonight, everyone's just really excited. Um, this is a big game for us, a big stretch on the road. So just trying to, um, you know, carry our momentum from Atlanta over into to tonight. And I wanted to ask you, has the energy – increased since there's been a change to the starting lineup? Um, I mean, I don't know if it's, I would say it's increased or not, but, you know, I think that everyone is just, we're all just willing to do whatever it takes to win games. Um, and so, you know, we changed the lineup. Um, obviously, Allie's been playing incredible all season long. And so, you know, just having her in there, that scoring just immediately at the start of games is always really helpful. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cheryl Rice out. Hi, Diamond. How you doing? I'm doing well. Good, good. Um, with eight games left, how do you balance the sense of urgency with the calmness of just winning the games? I mean, I, I don't think there is any balance anymore. I think whatever you have is what you have to give every night. Um, you know, the time to like reserve and play safe and, you know, save energy is, is past. Um, so you just got to kind of give it your all each and every night with the understanding that there are just eight games left. And, you know, we're still fighting for a playoff positioning along with the rest of the teams who haven't clinched yet. Right. And, and the other factor is you're playing the Storm back, back to back games there. You have wins on the road. It's really important. But how difficult is it against a team like Seattle? Well, I mean, you you know what you're dealing with when you're dealing with someone like Seattle. Um, they've got a big three that is uh, very efficient, uh, very hard to stop and defend. Um, so we have to place a lot of priority on those three, but also just their whole team in general. They play very well together. They have a winning culture here. Uh, they know what it takes to get to the end of the season and, and hoist the championship. So, you know, they, they play with a different kind of intensity. And so when you come into Seattle, um, you got to kind of, you got to match their intensity. Thank you. Annie Costco sometimes. Hey, Diamond, good to see you. I know you can't see me, so it's weird to say that. Um, but the, the WMBPA and um, the company Parity recently announced a partnership to, you know, bring more sponsorship deals. Sorry, that was, <laughs> I'm with the dog right now, but, um, yeah, to bring more sponsorship deals um, to to players that that work for all of you guys and your different personalities and, and just different deals that work for you. So um, big on manifestation, what's a sponsorship deal that you want to manifest or, or that would be your dream sponsorship? Mm, you know, I don't know. Uh, I would have to really think about it. Um, okay. Yeah. I will have to think about it. <laughs> All right. Think about it and I'll check back with you. Yeah. Um, sure. But just on a broader aspect, how important are deals like that as far as, 
getting players um, paid correctly? No, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. Um, I think that's going to be like the next step as far as like getting players paid really is what it's all about. You know, having us not have to go overseas and um, giving us a chance to kind of stay stateside and in the off season. So as long with increased visibility and exposure, um, I think that it's I think that is huge and super grateful for companies like Parity, you know, who are um, making an investment in women's sports. That's super dope. And then you touched on it this uh, the challenges or, or not challenges, but just this big road trip that you all have. Um, what's the messaging that that the team is is repeating just you know making sure that you come out of this um, on the winning side uh, just stay excited you know you know we're, we're not in a bad place at all we control our destiny um, and it's and it's basically on us you know just come in each game and know who we are be confident in who we are and you know give your give your best effort and you know don't attach yourself to the outcome and then in the in the last storm matchup, they shot um, 21 for 28 from the line. And obviously you guys are the best free throw shooting team in the league. How much emphasis has been put on, you know, limiting their shots from the free throw line and, and amplifying yours? Yeah, I mean, we've been a team like the past few games where we fouled uh, quite a bit. We've sent teams to the line quite a bit. Um, so that's been a huge point of emphasis for us going into the night is just playing defense without fouling. Um, and obviously, we always want to give ourselves a chance at the free throw line. So just going to try to be aggressive in, at the rim, um, see how the refs are calling it, and, and kind of trust that that when and if we do get to the free throw line, that we'll knock those down. And then last one for me, um, the switch up in the starting five. We've obviously seen this, um, you know, offensively, it, it's working. For you personally, how are you taking this, and, and how do you approach it Um as far as just bringing the same intensity, even though you're coming off the bench? Oh, you know, I'm okay. I've, I've been in this position, you know, all of last season. Um, and then now coming into this season, kind of step going back into that role coming off the bench. So, you know, I'm just the type of player that whatever the team needs is, is what I'll do. Um, so, you know, I haven't, you know, responded negatively to the change in the starting lineup. I'm just here to win. And, you know, I, I'm going to give as much as I can when I can to the teams to contribute to, to us winning. Thanks so much, Diamond. No, Wilkes. How you doing this afternoon, Diamond? I'm good. Uh, I just got a question for you. Do you guys feel like this game uh, is you can kind of use this game as a measuring stick? of like uh, where you guys are going into the playoffs or measure how much progress you guys have made this season going against a team like Seattle? Yeah, I mean, it's always a good gauge when you're playing against like one of the top teams in the league, especially on the road, um, just to see how we'll respond to adversity, um, see how our schemes are working, how players are playing, you know, in like big moments. Um, so, yeah, I definitely think that it's always going to be a good gauge, especially against a team like Seattle. Thank you. Thank you, Diamond. Thank you so much.
We'll have Candace in just a moment, you guys. Thank you. No, it wasn't there. Hi, Candace. We'll start with Annie from the Sun Times. Hey, Candace, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. Um, this is a slightly different storm team than um, the one you guys played right out of the break. So what adjustments need to be made or, or do you guys make knowing that um, Brianna and, and Sue are back? Well, I mean, obviously Stewie and, uh, and Sue are a lot to do with what, what they do as a team. Uh, we know we have our work cut out for us, you know, on the defensive end. And obviously I think it's just staying tight in our schemes. And, um, you know, this, is, this will be a great test, I think, for us and to see where we're at. And then how much of a priority has been placed on um, limiting fouls? Obviously in the last few games, um, teams have gone to the line quite a few times and um, against the storm, the, they had went 21 for 28 from the line. So um, as a team, what have you, you guys been doing just to, to limit the fouls? Don't foul. <laughs> um, I think it's being in position. I think that's the main thing. And then not leaving it up to the refs for a chance. So don't put your hand in the cookie jar. Like stay straight up and, and make them make a tough shot. I think we did a better job of that in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, last one for me, the WNBPA and Parity announced their partnership. And just given your experience with sponsorships and everything, um, how important is our deals like this in, in getting um, the women of the WNBA, the players of the WNBA paid? I think it's important um, in order to, to make money, you have to invest, obviously. And so to see uh, companies and organizations and um, corporations, you know, making women's sports a priority, I think there's definitely a place for it. And um, companies are going to see the advantage to it. Thanks, Candace. Mm -hmm. Eric Wilson. Candace, on paper, the storm in the sky are tied, if you will, with regards to free throw percentages, also with assists, and somewhat in steals. How important is tonight's game going to be about a game of runs, if you will? I think at basketball is a game of runs. You know, it's going on a run and it's stopping a run. Uh, you know, I think that this is a, a good chance. I mean, obviously, we're on the road. Um, it's a good chance for us to, to be disciplined. I think that's the biggest thing is you talk about assists, both on the offensive end. It's about being disciplined, about making the right play, like passing up good shots to get great shots. And I think when we're when we're doing that, um, we're at our best and the same thing with them. And with regards to being away, you have a better road record than you do home record. So do you feel that you have an advantage going into tonight, knowing that the discipline that you speak of is kind of shown when you're on the road? You know, I, I don't know what it is. I mean, I think just playing at home, you, we've got to be better. Um, and we could be better on the road as well. But I think it is getting into that routine and, you know, feeling good. You know, everybody has that move that they do when they feel good. And I think everybody has that play that they run where they can feel good no matter if the shot goes in or not. And I think that's how we got to play, um, whether we're at home or whether we're away. Um, the mentality shouldn't change. Thank you. Cheryl raced out. Hi, Candace. How you doing? Good. <laughs> Take your drink of water. <laughs> okay. Um, this is crunch time, basically, with only eight games left. How do you balance the sense of urgency with trying to remain one game at a time mentality? 
I mean, this is what you play for, right? Um, a lot of teams have had their ups and downs throughout the season and we're no different. Um, but everybody's had to deal with stuff. So this is the time that we got to come together. We got to start playing good basketball and um, we got to trust each other. You know, I think that that's uh, what's special. And I think it's evident when we're sharing the ball. And it's also evident when we're helping each other on the defensive end and we're disciplined, not giving up, you know, fouls. I think it, at this point in the game, it's um, who can make the fewest mistakes um, and who can capitalize on the other other team's mistakes. And so, you know, this is going to be that nitty gritty. I mean, we're kind of, everybody's kind of at a deadlock, you know, if you look at the standings. So everybody's playing for something at this point. Does your role as a veteran become more expansive to try to help the players understand the reality of where you're at right now? I think we all feel it. I mean, we have veterans on this team that understand the moment. And, um, you know, it's my job to show up. I mean, <laughs> they said Stewie and Bird didn't play in the first game, neither did I. So I think it's just about showing up and being aggressive and being decisive. How is your ankle? How's it been? I, I know you're, you're playing, but do you have to do special rehab or treatment in between? Yeah, um, that's the life of a 35 year old, you know, rehab treatment um, around the clock. So I've been fortunate enough to to be able to get some good treatment here. And, you know, I think to have a couple of days, obviously from flying across the country ha has helped as well. Thanks. You're 35. I'm much, much older. So I appreciate your age. <laughs> Nick Hamilton. Hey, Candace, uh, you spoke about uh, just the peaks and valleys that you all have gone through throughout the season, but defensively, where do you rate this team right now? Um, are you close to where you all set the goal in the beginning of the season to where you want to be defensively? I think we just need to do a better job of not fouling and we need to finish plays with a rebound. Those are the two areas that I, I think that we grade below where we want to be. Um, in terms of, you know, just staying in plays, playing five on five, not giving up catch and shoots, I think we're doing okay. Can we get better? Yeah. But I think the, the main areas are don't foul and we got to box out and give the team one shot. Also, too, you being a legendary uh, player yourself, you've always paid homage and given respect to those who've paved the way beforehand. Um, when you look at uh, these elite players like a Cheryl Swoops, a Tina Thompson, Cynthia Cooper, and what they, the culture they created with the dynasty. What did that mean to you? And, and what do you, what did you get from watching those ladies play and, and, and perform on the court? I think the biggest thing people don't understand um, when you win or when you're trying to win is the adversity and the craziness you go through. You know, I think we see them, you know, you see Coop raising the roof, you see, Tina with her lipstick fresh, you know, you see Lisa hugging, you know, Michael Cooper, but you don't realize like all the ups and downs it took to get there. And so I think it's just understanding and respect in the process. That's what I, that's what I've gotten from that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Landon Buford. Hey Candace, I wanted to follow up from a story that you did on TNT earlier this year. I recently spoke to Jamal Crawford um, I wanted to get your thought process on that since he is now, well, at least until his phone can get fixed, he might fall. Say it one more time. Until his uh, BlackBerry can get fixed, he's on team iPhone. So I want to get your, uh, get your thought process about that. <laughs> Jay Craw is definitely the homie. Um, I've enjoyed watching him play over the years and I'm so happy to see that he's on our team because, you know, you couldn't send group chats with the dude, couldn't send too many emojis. The pictures were a little fuzzy coming through. Didn't know if he received the text or not. Um, couldn't get on Instagram really. So I'm, I'm happy and I'm hoping that this opens his eyes to an entire new world. And then final question, what would you want your, uh, I know that uh, you guys just par partnered with NBA Top Shot, but what would you want your, if you could pick one um, moment that you could uh, you could uh, uh, create uh, from your career, what would that be? Um, that's a really good question. I think the moment that I remember the most is probably, um, I mean, it's definitely one in the 2016 WNBA championship. So I think that is just that moment where it's like those plays. I don't know. Uh, for me personally, I think the game winner against Phoenix to go to the finals. Um, yeah, I think that's probably that's probably it. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Two more quick questions. Um, Christos Teltes. All right, um, Pepper Persley. Hi, Candace. Um, great to see you. I'm working on a back to school project with a lot of kids back at school already or going back soon. So, any memories you could share as a student or um, as a mother? Yes. Well, my daughter's starting middle school next week. So, um, you know, we're getting ready for that. I think that you definitely have to lay out your, your first day of school, but see, I had a different philosophy because everybody tries to look cool on the first day of school. And so I would save my best outfit for like the third or fourth day of school, because then you know that you're going to come with it. So I think that that's um, the biggest thing. Layla is super, she wears a uniform at her school. So she's super into like shoes and making sure that her shoes and socks are fly. So I would say on the non-academic way, uh, it was definitely laying out the clothes for the third and fourth day of school. That's super cool because I, I have a unicorn as well, a uniform as well, and I'm going into middle school. So that's super cool. That can awesome. Get Thank your you. get your sneakers right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went um, sneaker shopping um, a couple weeks ago, which was really fun. Yeah. But. Thank you. Mm -hmm, no problem. Last question for Candace Nelf Wilkes. Hey, Candace, how you doing? Good. Thank you. Um, just a quick question. It's kind of long. I'm sorry. But um, I read an article the other day and it said historically teams that don't finish in the top four don't usually have long playoff runs. Now, I know being a fan of yours for years that you respond well to pressure. You were brought here to uh, win a championship, uh, help win the championship for Chicago. What do you have to say to media and fans to say Candace Parker can't do it? She can't lead Chicago to that championship because they are so, so low in the standings that she can't lead them to a long playoff run. Um, I don't have to say anything. I have to do it. Um, the standings are finished last time I checked. So um, I think that we still have a lot of basketball to play ahead of us. We have a lot of tests um, and it's not over till it's over. So um, I think the biggest thing is as you get older, you, you don't spend time talking about it. You spend time doing it. So Thank you, Candace. Thank no you, problem. Candace, and thank you no all problem. for joining us. Yep. We'll see you later for a pregame media availability with James Wade.